What's up, YouTube? Welcome to my channel, Ask Jimmy Smith. Yes, that was a sigh for all the Amazon sellers that I have um, I've been seeing reach out to me, obviously, posting in the various Amazon seller communities regarding the new Amazon or newer, I guess, enforcement of Amazon's rules on the GTIN uh, UPC barcode issues. And so that is what I'm going to address today. Amazon really wanted to throw a wrench into everybody's businesses, uh, which is unfortunate. And so obviously I'm typically the much more positive person. This video is not meant to be negative in any light, but I want to make sure that we're addressing the reality of the situation of what Amazon has done, what they could potentially do in the future, uh, both potentially good, but also potentially, you know, making this a more, much more difficult problem for everybody. Also, I'm going to give some different ideas on, uh, first off, what the problem is, who this affects, and then some things that I believe you can try to do. Now, uh, as we move forward and this video gets older and older, this may not apply. If you're watching this six months from now, it'll come out around October of 2022. Uh, so things might uh, change. This is ab absolutely a still developing situation. And I just want to be upfront with you that these are just ideas I'm giving. These are not hard and fast rules that will uh, help in the whole entire situation that will fix this issue. But I wanted to make sure to address it because I have received uh, more messages uh, or you know notifications on Facebook, wherever, uh, about this problem. And I wish that I had a, a hard and fast rule of this is what can fix it. Problem is it is still developing. And so we're going to move forward with some different ideas that I have currently. And hopefully, actually, some other ideas that I've seen in the Facebook groups that people have given that I actually really uh, think are, are good ones to try. It uh, doesn't mean that it will work for you. Your mileage may vary with this video, but I wanted to be upfront and talk about this because if I don't talk about the problems with Amazon, then ultimately you guys can't trust me. And so I wanted to make sure that I'm talking about this issue uh, as well, because it is a problem right now with Amazon. Amazon has the ability to do whatever they want, uh, you know, to listings. And, and this obviously affects sellers, affects sales, affects bottom line uh, for uh, for every seller out there. This affects private label sellers, uh, wholesale sellers, replens, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage sellers, branded bundle sellers. It affects the whole gambit of Amazon sellers right now. And so uh, I am going to address it and hopefully put your ideas and thoughts below in the comment section. Let me know if you've tried some things that have worked for this issue. Uh, I probably should have put this up to begin with. We're going to be talking about the Amazon FBA GTIN slash GS1 slash UPC cleanup issues and some ideas is to try. Now, for those of you that don't know what a GTIN is, uh, that is a global trade identification number. Typically, a GTIN would comprise of a UPC and or an, an EAN, just depends on what country you're in or what country the brand for that product is in and what they use. So ultimately, Amazon is starting to clean up their catalog from listings that use a GTIN, either a UPC or, EN, or an EAN, that don't match to the brand based on GS1. So I know that's a lot. If you haven't heard of these terms, I'll get into it a little bit more in a minute. But GS1 is essentially the company that Amazon partners with uh, and looks to for legitimacy regarding UPCs and EANs uh, for particular brands. So if a UPC that you're using does not match the brand name that GS1 has for that UPC, Amazon is starting to shut down those listings. So if somebody set up a listing under the wrong brand name, uh, then they're going to start shutting those down automatically. And so that is where the issue comes in for any seller because ever since I have been selling on Amazon, which has been since December, 2015, officially, we've actually had an account since 2010, but 2015 officially, people have said, hey, you can go buy barcodes from eBay. You can buy them from these other service providers and you can list these cheaper barcodes, sometimes, you know, really cheap, a couple bucks or a couple pennies, depending on where you're getting them from, can use those UPCs to make your Amazon listings instead of having to go through GS1. Now, as soon as Amazon started to partner with GS1, it has started to become more and more of a headache. And now they are starting to actually roll out some changes that are going to affect listings millions of dollars in sales of listings, both for Amazon and the sellers. And so this is becoming a headache. Now, what I want to point out is that because they're making these changes doesn't mean that Amazon selling is no longer a good thing to do or that the replens model that I teach on the YouTube channel or in the course that we've had over a thousand success stories come from, 
It doesn't mean that the replens model is over because if you remember, if you've gone through any of my videos, replenishable products are things that you can go out, you can buy over and over again and replenish, right? So that as a concept still works. The issue is the way we are sourcing for those products may end up needing to change uh, more in the future. Or it may just be that we're in a season where Amazon is making these changes. And once you give it about six months for all those changes to fully realize themselves, then the catalog will be cleaned up better and it will be a lot easier to continue our sourcing methods that I've taught uh, in terms of reverse sourcing, looking for brands and the type of products, flavors, sizes, et cetera, by not having to scan UPC codes. But for now, I honestly don't know what is going uh, to be the best method of checking these things. And so I've got some ideas that I've seen in the Facebook groups that I believe will help uh, that you can try anyway. Uh, you know, again, your mileage may vary on those, but I'm going to go into that. Now, before I get into uh, the specific problem and all of the other things on this video, I do want to mention that there is a free Facebook group that I've been a part of since uh, we started in 2015. Uh, here is the link for that. It's uh, the My Silent Team Facebook group. There's over 70,000 members as of the time of this recording. You can go to bit.ly forward slash MST group. Uh, and also the link will be in the description as well as it is on the screen right now. But that group is where you can get, again, it's free. You can get a bunch of updated information. You can ask questions for free. It is the best Amazon seller and e-commerce seller community that I've ever been a part of and that I've ever seen uh, because people are so helpful and responsive uh, for being a free group. There's tons of admins and moderators. I'm one of the moderators in there and I can help as well. So uh, I absolutely go join that group because that's where you'll get the most up-to-date information on a bunch of different things. Now, let's talk about the problem, and I'm gonna actually pull up a screenshot of the, the email that Amazon is sending out or the notification that you may see. So here's what it says. We would like to inform you that the listing information described below can affect your ability to sell certain products. And they ask, why am I receiving this message? Amazon requires valid global trade item numbers. I believe I said identification numbers earlier, by the way. So item numbers uh, on all product listings. Catalog quality teams have detected that some of your products are using invalid GTINs, and these are listed on the Fix Your Products page. And that's where you can go if you are looking for it for the link. You go to sellercentral.amazon.com forward slash fix your products. GTINs are considered invalid if they are not GS1 vended or not recognized by the brand owner. And that's key because there are people that have purchased barcodes that were GS1 vended, but they applied them to their Amazon brand. And the GS1 side does not take into consideration the new brand that has purchased that recycled code. So if you bought UPCs and made listings in the past from a third party service that had GS1 barcodes, and those barcodes don't specifically match the uh, the brand that you're saying that it should match on Amazon, that means Amazon is starting to shut those down, right? Which is a big problem, not just for replen sellers, but also for private label and wholesale sellers that have used discounted barcodes uh, and those services to ultimately create their listings. So it is a, a, an issue for everybody. It does say that you have to take action uh, to address these listings immediately or they will be removed. For more information, go to the listing requirements, product IDs, et cetera. And so you may have five GTIN issues. You might have 300 of them. It really depends on the size of your business. But this is the current problem and there is no quick fix to it. Now, if you are a brand owner, a private label seller or a wholesale seller, uh, and you have the ability to uh, make some changes, I would definitely reach out to Amazon and say, hey, I am the brand owner for this. I used the UPC that we had purchased uh, that uh, we've got under a different brand name. How can I switch the brand name so that my listing will stay active? That would be something that I would definitely reach out to Amazon on. They may just say, hey, tough cookies. You, you can't do anything about it. And you're gonna have to create a new listing. I've got a couple ideas that might help. I don't know, but it might help moving forward. Uh, but uh, it is something that you can try. I absolutely reach out to Amazon if you have created your own listings and you've got private label branded bundles um, and even wholesale. Now, if you are doing a wholesale, I would also reach out to the brands that you're working with and see, uh, you know, what they used for UPCs, see if they have any information on the GS1 side of things. If you're working uh, exclusively with them, if you're doing more distribution side of things, then you may be out of luck because the brand might not want to give you that information. And you might just have to create new listings, as I had mentioned earlier. And so this is something, as I mentioned, is still developing. I uh, I am concerned uh, just as to the amount of people that this will be affecting. As I said, it affects every seller. Um, and and I unless you started your Amazon journey 
with GS1 100% out the gate and you have been doing that properly. Because what we're also seeing is that there are other brands or, or companies that own multiple brands under their company. And they list on Amazon their, uh, their brand name for that particular product. However, the UPC on GS1 is registered to the parent company, or maybe it's the opposite problem. So legitimate companies that have GS1 barcodes that have registered them properly in their eyes are having listings taken down because Amazon sees that it's not a match. And when Amazon says that the catalog quality team has detected some of your products, that means that they're, the bots, the software programs that they're using are detecting these just on uh, an auto feed of some sort to GS1. So this is becoming a problem for brands. It's becoming a problem for sellers of all types. And ultimately, uh, I, I believe Amazon's going to have to do something to allow there to be a fix. Now, if you are somebody that has a company that has purchased GS1 and you've got other brands that are under your GS1, GS1 barcodes that are legitimately yours that were set up in your eyes properly, I would absolutely also reach out to Amazon and say, hey, I have a parent company. We purchased these for these brands. These are you know, my documents showing that I own these brands, whether it's an LLC creation or something that you have, and say these are legitimate. You know, I need to make sure my listings are get don't get taken down because this is how we've set up our company. If you're an Amazon aggregator and you've you've got a business that you have purchased a bunch of different uh, Amazon sellers uh, accounts, right? Amazon private label brands. Well, it might not match anymore, and so this is becoming a headache. I truly hope. Uh, I don't believe, but I hope that Amazon will see this problem and be able to fix it moving forward. But Let's talk about some of the things that you can do before I get into some of these ideas. I've got a couple of my own that I have been uh, suggesting. And so the first one is you can use these items, these ASINs, as a list, a jumping off point for branded bundle ideas. And that Facebook group that I gave earlier, uh, they have a whole strategy on branded bundles that I believe that you uh, should go Go there and just ask questions about. It's a whole course uh, that you can get through the proven Amazon course uh, that they've got within the group. But branded bundles are, in my opinion, the way to avoid this because you're creating your own brand. You're able to buy GS1 barcodes or get GTIN exemptions through Amazon. And ultimately, you start creating that. What this does is now you have an amazing list, if, especially if you're a replan arbitrage seller, you have an excellent list of products of things that other people created that you know 100% are going away off of the Amazon catalog. So who is going to provide these things to the Amazon customers that have been buying those ASINs faithfully for four or five years in many cases or longer, right? Who is going to provide those? Well, this gives you an amazing opportunity to focus in on the branded bundles idea and use that as a list of replenishable items that you were doing in a traditional arbitrage method, but ultimately uh, doing it from a more, uh, I guess, business focused branded bundle idea. So that is my first idea that I believe that every replan arbitrage seller should be doing. If you are a private label seller or a wholesale seller or something different than that, then you can obviously take these ASINs and try to create different um, you know, new listings, but that completely gets rid of all your old reviews and everything that you've done up until that point. So I've got a couple ideas from other people that, that may help you here soon. The second idea, and this is always ne never really a fun one as I'm more of an Amazon guy, but the second idea is eBay. Uh, as of the time of this recording, eBay does not have these rules. Uh, and so you can create your own listings for some of these things and hopefully offload some of those products. Uh, so you can always go to eBay or other platforms if you believe you can sell them. Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, etc. So you can recoup some of your investment. Now, the next idea, which I actually didn't type up a little blurb for it uh, that I would uh, recommend is to remove those listings and send them in on other ones. Maybe if it's if you've got four packs, five packs, six packs, remove those particular ASINs because you know they're going to be going away soon. And so you want to break those up and send them in as single listings, right? And get recoup some of that money. Also, before these listings get taken down, recommend trying to uh, sell out of them before they get taken down. So those are two pretty basic ones that most people probably are already doing. And I didn't make a little blurb for them for you. Now let's look at some of the other things that other people are currently trying. Again, your mileage may vary. I have no idea if this will work. I honestly have no idea if Amazon is okay with some of these things. I don't see any issue from a terms of service standpoint, but obviously do your own research on this before you do anything. Uh, you know, obviously I'd, <laughs> I'm going to give you that warning that these are completely... 
uh, just cautionary. You can try this if you want. Hopefully it will help. Uh, and so let me share my screen one more time. Here we go. So I will get back to this in a second. So this is the first one that I thought was creative. Uh, and this actually comes from that free Facebook group I mentioned earlier uh, that somebody gave as an idea. If the brand is the same, so if you have the same brand, I would create a new listing, add it as a new or updated version variation of the old one, and see if you can get some traction that way quickly before they take it down. I have no idea uh, if this will work, but I thought it was a creative solution potentially that could work. Ultimately, uh, you could create a new listing, attach it as a variation to that other one. You know, maybe it's a, um, you know, you've got a four pack and you wanna make a single pack. You wanna try some of the branded bundle ideas. I don't know if this will work. You can think about it. I've never done this, but I saw somebody mention it and I thought, hey, I'm going to bring it to you. Hopefully this helps, uh, you know, but ultimately I don't know how uh, allowable it is on Amazon. I also don't know if uh, if Amazon uh, on that date is just going to take down the whole listing. And so the work that you're doing from a variation perspective won't work. No idea. But I wanted to point it out if you just as a brainstorming exercise, don't sue me, right? This is not a prescription <laughs> to make to that this will absolutely work, but it gives an idea, maybe a jumping off point that you can think of that can help you in moving forward. The next one that I had, uh, or not that I had, but that I, uh, I pulled from the group says, I'm told you can create a listing under a new UPC and then merge the old listing to it. I've not done this yet, but this person was in a similar situation with this issue. So uh, since somebody said that they were told that, again, your mileage may vary. You can always reach out to uh, to seller support and say, hey, seller support, uh, can I create a listing since this new one, or this old one's going away under a new UPC that matches with GS1 and then merge the old one to this so that way we don't lose the reviews or don't lose any of that stuff. Or maybe it will uh, lose the reviews, but ultimately Amazon moves some of that traffic to the new listing. I don't know, but I wanted to point that out since somebody had been told that. Again, Facebook uh, knowledge and wisdom is not always the best thing to trust in, but I had to give you these ideas because I thought that it was a good a good opportunity or a good thing to try potentially. Again, check with Amazon, make sure it uh, all matches with terms of service. I don't know anything specifically in terms of service that this would be wrong for, but again, I just wanted to point it out as an idea for you to try if Amazon says that you're allowed to do that. Now, this next thing uh, is more for the replenish replenishable sellers, the arbitrage sellers. Uh, so thought number one uh, was for a quick validation of the GTIN ownership. If you're trying to do your regular sourcing, the reverse sourcing that I teach on this channel or in the course, you can also check the listed UPC on the listing uh, down on the listing product details. So on the product details page for that specific ASIN, you can scroll down, get the UPC for that. If you use RevSeller or ASIN Zen as a profit calculator, it'll typically have the UPC if there is one. Uh, or I believe uh, it says right here, Keepa can also provide the UPC code from the listing to grab it that way. So if you can find the UPC code that's currently on those listings, you can go there and do a search in the GS1 database. This is for new listings if you're trying to source, right? Not the old ones that have already been caught as a problem, but if you're trying to source new listings, you need to be checking uh, currently if it's uh, if it matches in the GS1 database. So you get the UPC, uh, go to the GS1 database. If it comes up with the same brand as is on the listing, your chances of that product listing being removed is greatly reduced. And so the brand needs to match the particular GS1 listing or GS1 um, database in that case. Thought number two that they this person had, you can add the products to your Amazon inventory. I assume they're saying as a fulfilled by merchant uh, listing. And then within 24 hours, I would probably give it 48 just in case, that product would show up on the problem list under the fix your products screen basically saying, hey, the GTN doesn't match, you need to fix it. So uh, I thought that was a good way as well. So it would slow down some of the sourcing process, but you could list that ahead of time using the FBM or even FBA. You could list it FBA and not send anything in. Uh, and ultimately uh, within 24 to 48 hours, it should show up on the fix your product screen. Here's the caveat. If it doesn't show up, that doesn't mean you're in the in the clear, right? You might send it in and then a week later, Amazon discovers it, right? These bots can only do so much at once. And so to me, uh, these are just things that you can try. There's no hard and fast rule. There's nothing that I have seen that ultimately is the answer to this problem. Now, what I do want to point out uh, is a couple different things. 
One, uh, if you're doing replenishable products uh, or any type of online arbitrage, retail arbitrage, replens still exist, right? Uh, you can still find things that you can buy and buy over and over and continue to sell over and over. This is just, this is impacting the, the listing catalog that Amazon has. So you want to use replens as a base and branch off from there. And I've said this ever since the first course came out uh, three and a half years ago when we started this uh, method that Replens is a great thing for you to learn the Amazon platform. Replens is the way that you can start to build a base so you have some confidence in uh, the majority of the cash flow that's coming through because you can buy them and sell them over and over again. And ultimately, as you grow with your Replens business, you want to branch off into other models. You want to look into wholesale. You want to look into branded bundles or just regular you know, non-branded bundles. You want to look into private label. You want to look at, uh, at proven product partnering methods and partnering with companies that want help with their own listings on Amazon, their own Amazon seller account. Use replans as the base, use the knowledge that you have and start to diversify that income once you get to a certain point where you're comfortable uh, being able to maintain your replan sales while also growing on other or in other directions. So I just wanted to point that out. The other thing is from a mindset standpoint, I wanna give you this. Uh, whenever we're looking at this issue, we have to realize we cannot control what Amazon decides to do, which is frustrating, right? That is the number one most frustrating thing that I have with the Amazon business model is that we can't control Amazon. We can't control if they give us the buy box. We can't control uh, if things are selling. We can't control if they do these different things in their terms of service or just start implementing things that they haven't dealt with for, for years. We can't control Amazon. But what we can do is control the things that we can control, which is, okay, what are some of these fixes that maybe we can try from this video or other ideas? Please post your ideas below this video. I think it'll help a lot of people if you've got some other ideas to try. Again, doesn't mean it'll work, but it's worth a shot. What can we do from a sourcing perspective, right? Do we want to start looking at the GS1 database, as I mentioned, or do you want to continue just sourcing as normal? Or do you want to make sure that all your products are a perfect UPC match? Do you want to switch to online arbitrage strategies that do just uh, the UPC side of things? Whatever it is, you have to look at what the activities are that you are doing that you can control and judge your success based off that, judge your progress based off that. Because if you're constantly focused on the sales results or the Amazon uh, headache that can come from this in any other business, if you're constantly focused on things that you cannot control, you're going to drive yourself crazy. I can't control what Amazon does. I can't control other people. What I can control is my reaction to this. I can control the activities that I'm doing to make sure that my business is set up for future success, knowing that I've got experience on the Amazon platform as a replenishable product seller that can translate into working with brands, that can translate into uh, to wholesale products, into PPP methods, into the private label methods, because I know what listings sell well, and I know ultimately what the listing should look like to continue to sell well. What can I control? And so I wanted to encourage you with that. Use your replenishable products as a base, branch off from there, continue to do replens because there are still tons of replenishable products. Only a certain percentage, a smaller percentage of our listings have been hit by this. It does hurt because it is a, you know, a decent percentage, but it's not the majority, right? <laughs> so it does hurt, but there are still things that can be done to grow, to be profitable, to use Amazon as a base, to use replens as a base, and to, to ultimately take advantage of what I still believe is the best low-hanging fruit opportunity that exists ever in the history of the world from a business perspective. We can go out, find products that are selling, list them on Amazon or eBay or any other marketplace, and sell them at a very low startup cost. These headaches are a pain. Basically, in my opinion, if, if your business fails because of these changes, that is not Amazon's fault. That is your fault as the seller. And I hate saying that, but I need you to realize that you can only control the things that you can control and you have the ability to pivot moving forward uh, with either working with Amazon, looking at new uh, new platforms, looking at new ways to do st different streams of income, et cetera. And so I know that might be harsh for me to say, but I personally believe it in my life that if the Amazon business were to just blow up because of this GTIN thing, which people are treating it this way, in the, the comments I've seen in various Facebook groups and different things that I've been reached out to on with emails and comments on the YouTube channel, et cetera, we're viewing it as an end of the world scenario and it's not. It's a very small percentage of listings as of today 
It is a developing situation still, and you have all the control that you need to be successful in this Amazon venture in, or in any e-commerce venture or any consulting venture, whatever it is, you're the one that has the ability to control your future as much as possible by taking the right actions and having the right mindset around these headaches, these hiccups that come up. I know it's a pain. I know a lot of people are getting affected tens of thousands of dollars of profit, especially if you did brand your own private label products or some of the wholesale stuff where you made your own listings and in, in the way that people used to with eBay, UPC codes, et cetera. I know that it hurts, right? There's still an opportunity to take this and flip it and make it into a good situation. And so I'm going to, I'm going to bring this to you, something that I've been trying to do uh, a lot more lately. Uh, and I may make a separate video on it because I think it's powerful. And I want you to ask this question. And I didn't make a blurb for it. I actually didn't plan on talking about it. But for whatever reason, you're going to hear it today. Whenever something negative comes up in your life, in your business, et cetera, instead of focusing on the headaches that come with that of, oh, poor me or poor everyone, I, these are problems. I want you to ask this question. What does this specific situation, what does the GTIN issue allow me to do? That one question will get you into the mindset of solving the problem, being positive about the problem, and moving forward. So, for instance, what does this allow me to do? If you had created all your own private label products, well, this allows me to become more of a, a serious brand on Amazon. You know, I can start using the GS1 barcodes, you know, put a little bit more investment there. That gives me the ability in the future because it's GS1 registered to be in retail stores, to, to branch off into different platforms that may have the same requirements. It gives me much more stability on the Amazon platform once I get going. As a replan seller, what does this allow you to do? Well, this allows you to start thinking much more creatively about sourcing methods. It allows you to look into branded bundles and wholesale strategies and private label strategies and the proven product partnering strategies. It allows you to focus on things to grow in a bunch of different ways. It's going to stretch you, but it allows you to do those things. And the second question I want you to ask, for some people, this may be helpful. For others, it may not. But how does that, the, the thing that that allows you to do, how does that make you feel? And I know as a guy, that can be a difficult question to answer. Uh, but I believe that when you focus on the activities that you're doing, and this allows me to do this, this gets me excited to do this because I have to, and there the opportunity exists. And that makes me feel excited. It makes me feel uh, that ultimately I've got a, a future that is out there that I can grow on, that I can push forward. It makes me feel uh, motivated so that I can provide for my family. It makes me feel X, Y, or Z, which ultimately you can focus on that. So if you have the ability to say, what can I do with this negative situation in a positive mindset? And you say, how does that make me feel? You went from a Debbie Downer that was saying, oh, this is going to ruin my business and hurt my family and do all of these things, which it is. And that's a pain. And I'm sorry that these things happen in any business and specifically in this situation on Amazon. But we have to focus on what can we do from a positive standpoint? What are the action steps we can take that we can control? And what does that particularly make me feel? Because that way you've got a motivator that is deeper than, than just the activities that you're doing. The motivator is cool. I'm excited about these things. I am now going to take action. It makes me feel more in control instead of out of control. And so, sorry, I went on a soapbox. Typically, I don't like my videos to go 30 minutes. I hope that this helps you. Ultimately, remember that this is still a developing situation. Post your questions, your comments below, because I want to be able to help if I can. Uh, again, all the things I mentioned in this video are just complete brainstorm ideas. And so hopefully they help. If not, uh, you know, there's not much I can do about it, but I wanted to present it to you. And uh, if it's if I hear anything else in the future, I'll absolutely make an update video for everybody. But this is where I'm at today. Uh, and hopefully this helped you. Hopefully this blessed you. Uh, comment on the video, like, share, subscribe to the channel, et cetera. And uh, don't forget, join the Facebook group. It's a free Facebook group. It's been a wealth of information and valuable um, in insight into my life over the last uh, seven or eight years. And so it's bit.ly forward slash MST group. I hope that you have a great rest of your day and a blessed rest of your week.